Let's talk a little bit about asset strategy development. To develop a strategy at the asset level, we first have to understand a few things. The way I like to explain this is we have to understand what do we own, how critical is it, how does it fail. We have to understand those things in order to understand and develop our asset strategy at the asset or equipment level. So let's take a look at each one of these. So first we have to understand what do we own. What do we own starts with us defining what an asset is. Whether or not a piece of equipment ends up inside your CMMS as a managed record, we have to define that. What is the difference between a spare part versus a piece of equipment? For me, I like to define it like this. If I'm going to replace parts on it or calibrate it, it's a piece of equipment and deserves an equipment or asset record. If my only option is to throw it away and replace it, it's a spare part. There's a couple of caveats to that in terms of regulatory agencies and what they want, but otherwise that's generally uh, my definition. We then have to collect that information, build a parent-child hierarchy, get it into our CMMS system, and of course, from an ongoing perspective, we have to do administrative work anytime we replace the piece of equipment. From there, we then have to understand how critical is it. How critical is it is a function of its severity, and its occurrence, how often it is likely to fail, and what is the impact or severity when it does fail. Severity is made up of factors like safety impact, quality impact, impact of maintenance or production and operations. We figure all those things out, figure out how often this piece of equ equipment fails, what's its mean time between failure based on various functions, and we determine its uh, criticality. Based on criticality, we now want to understand how the asset fails. So how does it fail? In the section of how does it fail, we want to uh, first identify all the functions of an asset and identify the functional failures and failure modes. We then look at all the effects of those failures and we develop what's called a risk priority number. Risk priority number is severity times occurrence times detectability. So it's very similar to our criticality matrix with the exception of we've added detectability. How likely are we to know it's failing before it fails? And then we can develop our asset strategy. Based on that risk priority number, we sort those failure modes from highest number to lowest number. And we want to go after the high numbers and make them lower. And so what we do is first we determine whether or not we can engineer out the problem. Can we get rid of the failure mode? If not, is there some on condition task we can do? So we're going to look at the use of condition based techniques, whether it's through, you know, IIoT or some predictive technology or even inspections. Uh, and even in some cases, uh, you know, destructive testing like die penetrant tests. What is the condition of the asset? Uh, even failure finding tests. So we're going to add maybe failure finding tests for things that are hidden failures like our transfer switches and e stops and those types of things. And then maybe even scheduled tasks like scheduled restorations or replacements of wear components. Those things are scheduled tasks, whether they are time-based or cycle or duty-based. And in some cases, we're going to run to failure. Sometimes we're going to decide to run the failure based on how low the criticality number is. So if the criticality number is extremely low, we're going to run the failure anyway. So once we get through all that, we then identify our spare stocking strategies based on things like OEM long lead times or you know uh, part availability and cost and how likely those components are going to be to foul, we develop a spare, uh, spare stocking strategy. So all of that kind of feeds into what our overall asset strategy is. And so there's a lot more to it than grab the manual and write down what the OEM recommended. So follow this, uh, scenario here. There's a lot more detail to go and, you know, keep tuning in to Reliability X. We'll give you much more detail on the stuff like this.